let's start by looking at Blackboard Ally. And at first, I need to remind us all that accessibility is a journey. We're all going to be at different stages of that journey. Some of us might feel that we're in the driving seat and some of us might need a little help on the journey. Some of us might be more interested in the journey rather than the destination. But do remember that it's always a journey when we're talking about accessibility. Is this how you always uh, view content? Do you always read your online content on a device like this or like that? Or maybe a nice big device like this? Is that how you always read your online content? Maybe not, but what about these scenarios? Perhaps you've been on a train using a, a laptop or using a tablet at the beach or perhaps on a plane or using a Kindle in the sunshine because they have such good um, contrast. It's much easier to see what's, go, what's written on the Kindle. You might even be looking at a tablet while in a hammock or trying to use a, a device while in a car. Or perhaps you prefer sometimes to listen to content. Um, might even be on the bus or perhaps just chilling in a corner with your cat and listening uh, to an audio book. So hopefully, I know it's noticed many of you thought those were familiar, those scenarios, but what about these um, challenges? Let me know, have you ever struggled to go through a, a PDF file on a, a mobile phone and found that you had to scroll from left to right and zoom in and out? Or perhaps uh, you would planned to look at something, but you didn't have any uh, data service or maybe your data had run out or you didn't have any reception, your Wi-Fi had gone. Or what about this? You're wanting to do a bit of text-to-speech action, but um, the book turned out to be a scan and it couldn't do any of that text-to-speech because it couldn't understand the, the picture of the text. So Blackboard Ally can help to answer three big questions. I'll be showing you these uh, one by one. The first is, how can we cater to the preferences of our diverse university population. So what Blackboard Ally provides is for content that is within Blackboard, it will allow you to access alternative file formats. If you prefer PDFs, but you want to make sure that they are um, tagged so that you can make your way through like different headings and levels, uh, you can use that. Or perhaps uh, thinking about having to scroll around to view a PDF on your uh, mobile device. Although some PDFs will reflow, HTML is much better. If you use a Kindle or other e-reader or program on a computer or a tablet, EPUB is very good. If you were to use an electronic Braille reader, then it will provide you an electronic Braille version. If you prefer to, to listen to something, perhaps because you're, you're doing a commute or um, you're doing some housework and it's just easier to, to put the headphones on to, to make up some time to go through uh, something that you wanted to read, uh, then you could listen to it instead. And I'm gonna give you a, a little demo of how this looks from the student point of view. So here I am in a Blackboard pre-production environment. It's a little bit slower than live, so apologies if anything takes a little while. I'm in a course as a student. This is a course I've just put together with some example content and it's about Southampton and the surrounding area. Uh, the first thing that you might notice, particularly if you are a regular Blackboard user, is that you have these extra alternative format icons. Now these extra alternative format icons appear beside content where you can get a one of those alternative formats and it's provided by Ally. So if I select that icon, you can see that I could access this file in a number of formats. So I'm going to tell you a bit about them in a moment, but uh, let's just have a look at, a, at the HTML version first. So that's going to open. And so this is a, a, just a short document about uh, towns and cities in Hampshire, three of them in particular. 
you can see that it's, although it started as a Word document, and perhaps actually I should show you that Word document first. So if I just open up that Word document, you can see here I have that document and I requested an alternative form, an HTML alternative format. And so here I have that rendered in HTML. And of course, because it's HTML, it's nicely responsive and it will be just as readable on a tablet, a phone or a monitor or on a computer, a large monitor. And the benefit of having the HTML mode is I could use ex browser extensions. So if I wanted to turn on the reader mode um, plugin for, for Chrome, I can look at the content in that way. And then I have like lots of additional uh, air ways that I could process or read that content or change how, how wide it appears or, or how thin it is and so on. Or something else that I might want to do because I like maybe um, taking notes or um, so if I, I could say I want to highlight this and perhaps add a, a post-it note here. So this is just with a, a browser extension. I can add uh, a note about that content. And then if I were to refresh that page because of this particular browser extension, I've got it uh, there as well. Now you might have noticed that if I go back to the original Word document, if I just enable editing for a moment, you can see uh, that these uh, kind of titles are not in the HTML version. And that's because I hadn't added any proper heading styles to that document, which I'll tell you more about in a moment. Let's just look at a different alternative format of that document. If I go to the EPUB version, I could open up uh, that EPUB. I've got a e uh, electric uh, bo book reader on the um, on my computer here, but normally you'd be working with uh, on a Kindle perhaps where you might open this kind of content. And again, I have different options for how I would like to um, change the, uh, the view of that content. And so if I change then the, the text to be white and so on, then I've got that there. And so this is how it might be in an e-reader. And if I wanted, if you might have noticed this Beeline Reader, this is a tool which um, provides, uh, uses a technique which uh, makes it easier and some, for some people find it easier to, to read content. What it does is it changes the color of the text as you progress uh, through the different paragraphs. And uh, some report that that makes it easier for them to view. And you can also change some of the colors and there's a nice uh, dark version there as well. So that's just one of those options that I've, we have with Ally there. Now, I have a, a scanned file here. If I open up uh, this uh, PDF file and just move that on screen here, you can see this is a scan from a, from a book. And it's not a too bad quality of a, of a scan, but you can see that is obviously uh, not a real or not usual text that you might be used to in a PDF. It's, it's just a picture. So another option that Ally provides is it can automatically do uh, optical character recognition. So if I run that through, it's going to now create a PDF, which now you can see this has been uh, converted to text. And if I just uh, edit here, you can see that this is now selectable text. So if I wanted to generate an MP3 version, that would work. And although it's not um, perfect, it's quite good. Uh, this this version. So if I had had a, a scanned document uploaded to Blackboard, uh, that would be there as well. But it only works so so uh, like to, to some extent. For example, here we have a handwritten list of the best parks in Southampton, a, a top five. 
And if we ask Ally to generate a uh, optical character recognition version of that, it's just turned it into a picture. So for that, it's not so good. So, but what it does allow us is to have different uh, alternative versions to suit if we prefer to work um, uh, to, to listen or we want content to be more responsive it makes it very easy for us to do that straight away uh, so here's a breakdown of those different types of uh, file format that ally provides and i'm just going to point out a few uh, examples so if we did a lot of commuting then here we can see which formats are pretty good if we were commuting of course if we were driving then the audio version is, is probably the only one that we ought to be using for sure. Um, but if we were a passenger, then any of these alternatives are fine as well. Further down here I have, uh, if you're on a mobile device, then although the PDF readers on mobile devices are pretty good, but uh, having uh, an HTML version or an EPUB or using the, that beeline is going to be much better on a mobile device usually or if we were offline, because when Ally generates us a file, it generate it, first of all, it asks us whether we want to open it or save it. So we could easily save it away on our phone and so on, so that we could use it because we know that we're going somewhere where we might have difficulty getting a connection. And some might prefer reading, some might prefer listening. So again, the audio version is gonna be better if you prefer to listen, but probably most people will have a will vary at some points it's more uh, convenient to read and at some points it's more convenient to listen and if you like uh, particularly highlighting or copying and pasting or being able to search a resource then a number of these alternative formats are beneficial for that and and if you use some of the imp impressive browser extensions that are out there you can add more of that highlighting and note taking and bookmarking uh, to to HTML files as well. But um, it only goes so far. There's always going to be room for improvement. And I'd like you to have a listen to this description of a table. Uh, you should hear, hear it. And I've also got automated um, captions of the text, which are not always uh, perfect. But I'll have a listen to this description of a table. I'm not going to play the whole thing. I'll probably play about the first 50 seconds or so, and then I'll, I'll, I'll point something out about it. Comparison of these towns. Begin table with four columns and five rows. Row one of five. Column one of four. Column two of four. Southampton. Column three of four. Winchester. Column four of four. Rumsey. Row two of five. Column one of four. Population. Column two of four. 269,781. Column 3 of 4. 45,184. Column 4 of 4. 19,441. Row 3 of... So hopefully you might have noticed that if you're listening to quite a few rows of that data, by the time you've got to the, the third or fourth row, you've probably forgotten what the column headings were. But if... or actually before I say any more have a listen to, to this version of that same table begin table with four columns and five rows row one of five column one of four column heading column two of four column heading Southampton column three of four column heading Winchester column four of four column heading Romsey row two of five column one of four with column heading population column two of four with column heading Southampton 269,781. Column 3 of 4 with column heading Winchester. 45,184. Column 4 of 4 with column heading Romsey. 19,441. Row 3 of 5. So hopefully you noticed that as we went through each of the rows in that column for the, the row was for the population data, it told us or reminded us what the column heading so which of those towns in Hampshire uh, that particular uh, row of data was referring to. So the next question that Ally can answer is how can we coach content authors to consider accessibility? Because just by simply adding a little bit of uh, detail to that table in Word 
to say, or in Excel and so on, to say uh, that this row has all of the headings. We then automatically get a much better result if we turn that table into an MP3 file to listen to. So it's important that uh, we can help our colleagues to, to make sure that they're considering accessibility as they're uploading content to Blackboard because what we would try want to avoid is seeing tweets from our students like this, where in this case, a student found a scan of a book had been uploaded onto Blackboard and that scan, uh, you'd have to turn your head to be able to have any chance of reading that. It wouldn't be that great a result or an experience for sure. So what Ally will do is it will add little traffic light icons that only staff will see. I call them traffic lights. They're not really traffic lights. They're more like speedometers. And uh, red meaning poor, orange meaning like it's, it's a, it's, it could be much better. And then there's two different uh, versions of the green one, like it's very good or it's perfect. Although perfect is in the eye of the beholder, as we'll, we'll see a little bit uh, later. So... I'll give you a demo of this in a moment, but just to give you a quick overview, where you see content as an instructor or someone who has access to edit a course, so students do not see this, um, you have these little indicators explaining how accessible um, that content is. And when you select that icon, it will um, bring up a review of what the issues are that you ought to aim to resolve in, within that content. And it will always point out the most significant issues first. So it will ask you to fix areas which will have the greatest benefit. Uh, so it get, takes you through in priority order. And with some content, it will also allow you to just add, for example, an, an image description in line in Ally without having to, to go and edit a Blackboard content item to, to add that in. Furthermore, and within the control panel, we'll have an accessibility summary where you can get some stats, find out about possible quick wins and what are the most serious issues to resolve. So at the top, you get a uh, your overall score. Then it will help you to find issues that uh, should be the easiest to fix, your quick wins. And those areas which um, uh, where you could get the greatest benefit so in terms of um, being able to fix the lowest scoring content first and content that has the lowest score will usually have the most severe issues also within that report you can see um, issues on that course ordered by severity and how many content items are affected and when you look for the easiest issues to fix it brings those up first as well and also shows you that low scoring content so now we're going to have a, a quick demo of how this looks from the instructor's side so now i'm in the same course as an instructor so as an instructor you still see those alternative formats so that's not only for students it's for everyone in blackboard because i'm sure uh, there'll be many cases where those alternative formats will be useful to you regardless of your role in a course. So we're going to start by selecting this uh, indicator next to that Hampshire Towns document that we looked at earlier. And so it's telling me that uh, one of the images in the document is missing a description. Now, If I have this document on the J drive or my uh, OneDrive or somewhere I could open it from there, but if I don't have that file to hand, I could download it straight from here in the Ally uh, interface and then open that up in Word, uh, which I'm just doing at the moment. So here's that file. So it was saying that I wanted it wanted me to add alternative text. And you might think, oh, I've never added alternative text. How do I do that? If I go back to Ally, First of all, it's going to explain to me with these two buttons why it's important and how to do it. So if I look at what this means, it will uh, offer an explanation of why it's important. So uh, mainly that those that can't see the image will still get to the, understand the meaning that that image had. Uh, for example, if they're listening to an audio version of the resource and 
it's also got some more of the, the benefits from there. If I disclose that and I want to find out how, then if I'm using Word for, for 365, then here it's got the guide on how to do that. So it's going to close that away and go back to that document. And I'm going to add some alternative text. So it's just an image of uh, Southampton Docks, uh, Winchester Cathedral, and uh, the Market Square in Romsey. Uh, I might write some better alternative text if I had a, a view on what the context was, but for now, I'll leave that and I'm just going to save this uh, in a temporary folder for now. So if I just uh, save that, I'm just going to drop it in just a temp folder. And here's one I did earlier. So I'm just going to save over that and replace that file. So now if I go back to Ally, I could, if I had my file explorer open, I could just drag that file, but I'm going to browse for it and select uh, that replacement file. So, so now it's going to upload the file and ah, it's great. I've got my score up to 68%, uh, but there's still an issue to resolve. It wants me to, uh, well, telling me that I've got uh, tables, missing headers. What I showed you earlier where we had an audio version of that table. This is why it's important. So I could look at the guide on how to do it, but if I just go back to, um, to Word and I just set my header row and first column and then just set my table properties and make sure that I've got the option set that the to repeat the header row at the top of the page and save that. I can close that file now. I just browse and add that again. I can upload the file. So it told me the most important thing to do first, setting that alternative text, and then it worked out what the next important thing to do. Uh, if you were thinking, actually, I don't want to do things one at a time. I want to, I'd like to do it all in one. Can't I just see what all of the issues are? If I um, have a look at uh, alternative uh, file, so it's just taking a moment to load, but now if I open up this PowerPoint, I can select here to see all of the issues with the document. So if I go to all issues, here it's telling me what all of the issues are, and if I fixed them, how it would improve the score. And you can see it brings up the, the most important thing that's gonna improve the score most quickly first. So I can always go back and look at all of the issues. Just something else is I've got to show, to tell you about this interface is saying there are four uh, images without a description. So here I can move between those images to, so I can really explore the document and find out where those issues may be. So now that I've done that, let's have a look at that accessibility summary that I mentioned before. So, if we, um, once that's fired up, then I can see my overall accessibility score in this case is uh, 59%. And I've got these shortcuts to fix low scoring content or find the easiest issues to fix. This is a, this demo course doesn't have much content on it. So it's uh, quite, uh, the, the numbers are quite small. But here, for example, there's an image that I'm using within the course that doesn't have alternative text. And I just happened to have prepared some earlier so I could uh, copy in that text and then add it. And now that score for that image has gone up to 100%. So that is a very uh, quick demonstration. So let's go back to the slide deck. So we looked at the what, Im what issues there were in that course, but how are they in our modules for the current academic year that's just about to end the 2021 academic year? So we've got some 366,000 files with accessibility issues, and we can see uh, their importance and um, the order in, in which they are occurring. And if we're thinking about how important those issues are, if we just 
filter to just see the severe issues, then those documents which are scanned but aren't machine readable, so we wouldn't be able to get an effective audio version, uh, are the most severe. So there's quite a lot of opportunity to, to resolve uh, a lot of issues that will then help us to make sure that those alternative file formats are as usable as possible to, to our users. So what Ally offers is those alternative formats. Something I didn't uh, show you, but is also in there is if you have an animated GIF that might uh, potentially cause a seizure, it will uh, kind of put a filter over that to hide it. And it will ask you to click to uh, or to select the item to then show it. Uh, so it gives you that warning first, provides you with the data, provides uh, content offers with coaching on how to improve accessibility and focuses on some of those quick wins. And I thought there what would be quite useful to point out was there's from Birmingham University called Lost in Transition. Uh, here's a quotation from a student they spoke to. It said, it says, they gave me the wrong paper in picture PDF form. So it was a PDF, but the text was as an image. It wasn't machine readable. I had a bit of a meltdown because I was so nervous. It was so frustrating because I've been there for two years now and it's such a basic thing. So if um, this document had been in um, the learning environment and Ally had been installed, then all of the instructors would be aware that that was quite an important issue. Uh, something else that this report pointed out was that HE institutions have over rely on individual adjustments, which uh, can impact the ability for students who uh, have reported a disability or declared a disability to, uh, can kind of prevent them to working independently and feeling included with their peers because they're having to wait for an alternative to become available. Whereas uh, with Ally, it can normalize some of these adjustments so they're available to everyone and you don't need to ask for anything in particular. And that document also uh, uh, pointed out that there's a lack of expertise across the sector and how to make higher education accessible. And again, with Ally doing that coaching, uh, that's definitely a positive step. And I really like that thought about normalizing accessibility uh, by just providing those alternative formats to everyone in a course, regardless of if you've declared a uh, disability or impairment. And Good examples of normalizing accessibility are those drop curbs, which that might be for wheelchairs, but also used for bicyclists, skateboarders, and so on. And you might have seen variations of this, uh, this cartoon or uh, illustration before, where uh, a boy in a wheelchair is asking whether the wheelchair ramp could have the uh, snow cleared. And uh, the person shoveling the snow says, no, I need to do these steps first for the others. If he had done the ramp first, then everyone could use the ramp. And some a nice touch that I thought about the ally symbol is it's the inverse of the uh, mathematical symbol, meaning for all or for any, because these formats are for everyone. But there are some challenges. Uh, for example, once uh, our colleagues see some of these indicators, we need to be sure that we've done effective communication so that we're letting people know that this isn't necessarily anything uh, you should feel uh, threatened by, but this is some help that can help you to make your content more accessible. And there are some other challenges, like uh, we might find lots of documents across modules uh, that are from a central source. For example, this careers employability checklist or a humanities cover sheet. So for those where it's from a central source, we should probably fix it at the source rather than necessarily fixing it multiple times in multiple courses. We might also come across old PowerPoint files, which uh, hopefully will have newer templates, which will uh, have uh, much better accessibility. We might also find some of those templates are in an kind of old 4-3 ratio, like from an old TV instead of the widescreen format that most of us will be familiar with now. We've also found some uh, potential difficulties in how Ally will deal with certain types of uh, STEM based content, where depending on how the PDF file that was generated from this has been marked up, 
ally might have difficulties uh, interpreting that correctly. Or in some cases, it might not present the content at all. So it's certainly not necessarily going to be uh, straightforward uh, rolling out ally. There'll be many issues for us to, to resolve as we go and find strategies to deal with. A 100% ally score should be the beginning. It's the floor, not the ceiling. There will be many other ways we could improve uh, that document that Ally won't tell us about, uh, which I can tell you about if there's time in the Q&A. We might find that the way that the content was originally designed to be presented is just not necessarily uh, the best way to approach that. There might be better ways. So it might be better to approach content redesign or redesigning aspects of the module rather than tinkering away with documents which might be better done in a different way entirely and a institution-wide approach is essential for the success so we shouldn't see allies something in, iso in isolation um, we need to have an institution-wide approach to accessibility so that everyone is involved and also that everyone knows their responsibilities but we will have five accessibility allies joining us this summer. They're enthusiastic and engaged interns who will be working for 11 weeks over the summer, helping to improve content accessibility and more. If you think, what was that third question that we wanted to answer? Well, Ally can also help us to meet our legal responsibilities. So to, let's just recap. What does Ally offer? We've got those alternative formats, seizure warnings, data, coaching and finding those quick wins and it's going to be a great way of helping us on this journey but we're always on a journey we might never reach a point of 100 percent accessibility institution-wide but it certainly will take us a bit way a big way on that journey so now i'm going to uh, go back to teams and see any questions that you have for me thank you for your time and thank you for listening